it seems apparent that other nations are a lot more in touch with some of these spiritual realities than what this nation is. Yes. So let's talk about that a little bit. You've already um, you know, indicated that you are a staunch supporter of this president. Yep. Can you tell us a little bit more reason why, what the Lord has shown you, especially concerning the spirit realm and what's yep. really taking place? Yeah, with President Trump, the reason I am so strongly uh, such a supporter because I believe with every, with every fiber of my being, he is the one that God chose. And the reason I believe that is because when he first announced his, announced his candidacy, uh, what was it, 2016, or maybe it was, in, it was actually 2015 when he announced it. Well, in 20, Mary and I immediately said, he's the guy. I mean, we just, we just knew in our spirit. Well, in 2016, March of 2016, I had a dream that President Trump called me on the phone and said, I need for you to do a conference on July the 4th, 2016, to shift things concerning the election for me. And so I won't go into all that. But the bottom line is we, did, in fact, it's in the book. We did that uh, in the book on, on President Trump. We did that. And I stood in the, in the, the Lord told me, I will let you stand in my council. And when you do, I want you to decree a judgment against Hillary Clinton and against her campaign out of James 1.11. And that's what I did. I said, I decree that Hillary Clinton's campaign is as the grass of the field, and she is as the flower of the grass, and the burning, searing, exposing heat of God will cause everything to be exposed, and she will wither away. And that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. And, and I knew God had given me that piece of the assignment. So I did that. So after President Trump was elected, uh, uh, before his inauguration, I had the second dream. And in this dream, he comes to me and he asks me to be on his cabinet. And, and, uh, and so, long story short, I knew I was being given an assignment in the council of the Lord to stand in behalf of him and his administration. And so, I have endeavored to do that. Then the third dream came after his inauguration. And in this dream, he came to me and he said, I want you to be my running mate for my second election. And now he was just for starting his first one. And I knew that he wanted me, he was asking me to be the running mate. And I woke up and I thought, why am I dreaming this? And the Lord said to me, because I, what I intend to do through him, it will take two terms to do. And I need for you to run with him in the spirit until he's reelected. I need, for you to, I need for you to be a part of moving things in, out of the way that would try to prohibit that. So I've been faithfully doing this for three plus years, if not more. Well, yeah. Yeah, going on more. And so I've been doing this. So what happened was about a month ago before any of this coronavirus stuff started, started coming the way it's coming. I mean, it was being kind of reported about China and all that kind of thing. But, but before any of it happened, I have this fourth dream. And in this dream, I'm standing next to President Trump uh, before a table. And I'm bumping up against him with my shoulder. And I'm, I'm playing with him. I'm, 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 in my dream, I'm, I'm joking with him and playing with him. And he looks at me, and he says, this is the presidency of the United States of America. And I suddenly realized I was not taking serious. I, I wasn't taking the position and him serious. And I felt very chastised, very embarrassed, humiliated even. I was like, I was like oh, you know, I'm so sorry, and, 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 and you know, uh, everything that went with it. And, um, and I... I I, uh, and then, as we're standing, so that, he did that, and then there's, he has a newspaper, that, and, and, he, and he's got it before him, and he's looking at the financial section of it, and he's running his hand over it, and he, he turns the page, and he runs his hand over the financial section, he turns the page, and he does this several times, he turns the page, when he gets through looking at it, he takes it, he folds it, he folds it a second time, and he hands it to me, and I wake up, and I knew the Lord was saying, this is before any of this stuff, I knew the Lord was saying, I knew he was saying, number one, the, my, I don't think that I wasn't taking it serious. I don't know how I could have been more serious. I felt that God was letting me feel his chastisement that he was directing toward, the, toward, toward us as God's people. Mm -hmm. That literally we have not been taking serious what's at stake. Right. We have not been taking serious this whole issue of President Trump and his position as the president. And that the church needs to take serious this time that we're in. Then I also knew, this is way before the corona thing. I also knew that there was being plotted something to disrupt the economy of the United States of America. 
and that President Trump was overlooking and overseeing this thing, watching very carefully what was going, but in that he folded it and handed it to me, God was giving me and those who had joined with me an assignment to pray for this economy that it would not be disrupted so that they could use it to cause President Trump's reelection to fail. Mm -hmm. And I promise you that is the intent. That is the intent. That is why they're going to come after him with every power in their being. And they delight in the economy suffering. They delight in it. But God needs a people that will stand that this economy will not be disrupted. And that and, and they won't be able to use that against him in this thing. I mean, I'm telling you, see, people can say, oh, I don't like President Trump. Well, to me, that is, to me, that is neither here nor there. I understand why people would, would, would feel the way they feel because of, of the abrasive. But I want to tell you something. Our system and the systems of the world were under a politically correct spirit that Donald Trump has destroyed. Yes, yes. And it needed to be destroyed. Because that system was designed to silence believers yes. and to stop us from having a voice and speaking up. Yes. And people don't understand. Marxism, the first... One of the first strategies of Marxism is to create a politically correct climate to silence Judeo-Christian value systems. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we play right into it. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's not nice. Listen, God said to me, pray for him and call him Donald J. Trump. My president, Donald J. Trump. And, and I said, why do I have to do that? The Lord said, because I need for you to say he's my president. Because I will do for you what I wouldn't do for him. You have a place before me in my courts and my counsel, and I will be able to do for you when you ask me that I would not be able to do for him if he were to ask. Mm. See, people don't understand that. The status you hold in heaven has everything to do with, with, with the prayers you can get answered. And so God said, you, I need for you to call him my president. And he said, in, in, in that time, all the prophetic groups that I was kind of around, they were saying, oh, we want him to be a John. We want him to be a John. We want him to be turned into a John, the beloved. He's Donald John Trumpet, uh, Trump. Trumpet. No. And I said, and the Lord said, call him Donald J before me. He said, because Donald means real world ruler. And I don't need a beloved in the White House. I need a world ruler. I need somebody that's going to challenge the one world system that they want to put into place. I need somebody to challenge that and to destroy it. And quite honestly, guys, that's why they hate him. He is demolishing globalism. He is demolishing it. And they are going to try to take him out no matter what because they want a one world system. And so people that don't understand that, they say, well, he doesn't, he doesn't act like a Christian. Well, I don't even know if he is one. I hope he is. I personally think he probably is. But the bottom line is, I don't care. I don't care. God used a Cyrus. He used a Cyrus to, to, uh, to, 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 to fulfill his plan. And Cyrus was a very heathen king. Um, I promise you, it does, that, that piece doesn't matter. I mean, he's going to stand, President Trump is going to stand before the Lord and give an account for himself one way or the other. Whatever he has done, just like the rest of us in our bodies, either good or bad, that's going to be between him and God. But I'm telling you, right now the hand of God is on him because I cannot even imagine our nation and, and, and where it would be. And, and here's the truth. If he's not reelected, the, the stage has been so set right now that if the, if, they, if, if the liberals get back into power, Katie bar the door. I'm telling you, they're going to take it and they're going to run down a road that, that I can't even imagine what life could become like in the United States. And the liberties and the attack against the church that would come. I promise you that that would, that would happen. I mean, I, I, I got to say, I mean, right now, President Trump, and people will say, oh, it's political maneuvering. But the bottom line is, he designate, designated tomorrow as a national day of prayer. As a, I don't know when we've had a president that's done that. I mean, I know we have our national day of prayer. But here he is saying, tomorrow I call forth a national day of prayer that we would stand to beseech God to help us and to defend us against this coronavirus. I mean, at least there's a guy in the office that recognizes we need God's help. I'm like, good Lord, help us. You know, help us to understand. So, so 
as you can see, you pull the plug. <laughs> and I am very passionate. But my passion comes, I was never political. I was never political. Politics did not, and they do not interest me. It's never been an issue. I knew we all oh, we need to be involved, and y'all go vote, and all this kind of stuff. But but there's a there's a there's a prophetic mandate that that came on my life to, to pray for President Trump. And there are times I've never met him. There are times that I grieve over him, and over his family, and over the stuff that they've gone through. I mean, this man was a billionaire. Who in the heck needed this? Who needed this? And I'm thinking. Only because I believe God touched him. My wife, my wife actually, she was somewhere where I was preaching. She actually shows up every now and then. <laughs> no, she was somewhere with me. And I was, I, I was talking about President Trump. And she said she felt the Lord said to her, the reason I had to use President Trump, she said, because, this is what she felt like the Lord said, because the one I would have used was aborted in the womb years ago. Said he wasn't my first ch choice. But he said, I needed one to turn the nation. I needed one to stand. And the one I would have used was aborted. I don't question that at all. I don't question that at all. Because that's just the horrendousness of abortion. And how many people, how many people with divine, uh, unbelievable destinies before God lost those destinies because they never had a chance to live life because of this whole issue of abortion. I mean, I mean, in, in all the things that are connected to it. So, so, yeah, I believe, I mean, I believe we're in a very critical season. And I knew when the Lord said, I need for you to run with him in the spirit, I knew this thing wasn't going to be a cakewalk. I mean, it's like, it's like up until this happened, it was like, oh, nobody can beat him. He, you know, da, 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 da. And, 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 and I got to say, it looked that way. But I'm telling you, the things that are going on right now are game changers. 